When Nintendo launched the Game Boy Advance in 2001, it would be a radical departure from the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color, although it was backward compatible to those machines thanks to the inclusion of Game Boy hardware inside the system, other than the Game Boy brand, which was a household name, the Game Boy Advance is not compatible with Game Boy games at all. The GBA is a 32-bit handheld that uses an ARM7 TDMI CPU running at 16.8 MHz. The Game Boy CPU is an 8-bit Sharp LR35902 processor running at either 4.18 MHz on original Game Boy mode or 8.38 MHz if it's running in Game Boy Color mode. To handle its backward compatibility, the GBA simply switches the hardware into Game Boy mode and the Sharp CPU kicks in and begins processing instructions. This isn't really anything special and we've seen Nintendo use this approach to backward compatibility for many generations. We would see this with the Nintendo DS and the ability to run Game Boy Advance games. The Nintendo 3DS was backward compatible with the Nintendo DS. The Nintendo Wii could play GameCube games and the Nintendo Wii U was backward compatible with the Nintendo Wii. Each system had the ability to run games from its previous generation. But if we consider backward compatibility on the Nintendo cartridge based systems like the DS and the 3DS, the Game Boy Advance is unique in that it's pin compatible with its predecessor, the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. Yet the architecture of the two systems is completely different. But what's interesting, however, about the Game Boy Advance is that it shares the exact same cartridge slot as the Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And when inserting a Game Boy into the slot, somehow it must detect and switch the hardware into Game Boy mode. Otherwise, it must be a Game Boy Advance game and must boot into GBA mode, which of course is the default. So how does a Game Boy Advance know if a Game Boy game has been inserted? If we take a look at a Game Boy cartridge, it has 32 pins across. And if we compare that to the GBA, it too also has 32 pins. And if we compare the pinouts from both the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance, they do share similarities. For example, the read and write pins are the same, the address lines and the data lines are also the same, the voltage and ground lines are also identical. But interestingly enough, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games will run at 5 volts, while the GBA games will run at 3.3. And yet, if we look at the Game Boy Advance pinouts, there is no indication that the game should be running either in Game Boy or Game Boy Advance mode. When you power on a Game Boy Advance with a Game Boy Color cartridge, you'll notice it does a very quick fade before the screen boots into Game Boy Color mode and launches into the game. But behind the scenes, there's actually quite a lot going on. As it turns out, right next to the cartridge slot, there is a switch that lets the GBA know once a Game Boy cartridge is inserted that it needs to switch into Game Boy mode. So how does this work? Well, it's quite simple. If we take a look at the side of a Game Boy Color game, it's completely square. But if we then compare it to a Game Boy Advance game, you'll notice that there is a small notch on both sides. The purpose of this is to prevent from the switch being hit. But if the switch is tripped, it sets the voltage for pin 1 to plus 5 volts, which as we said previously is compatible with Game Boy and Game Boy Color cartridges. But there is still more to consider. When the GBA is powered on, it first boots from GBA mode before switching to GB mode. Without the switch, there is no way of knowing that a Game Boy cartridge was ever inserted. In the Game Boy Advance boot ROM, there is a small piece of code that handles the switching. If the switch was enabled, the BIOS contains code to detect a Game Boy or Game Boy Color cartridge. One of the Game Boy Advance registers that handles wait states checks for the switch. It does this by checking for a particular bit that's been set to true if the cartridge voltage was adjusted. It then switches the hardware to Game Boy Color mode, and it does this by setting a bit in the display register, and this in turn will disable the ARM7 processor. Now there's also a second part to this that's quite interesting, and that is there are a handful of Game Boy Color games when plugged into a Game Boy Advance provide enhancements and features that are not found on the original Game Boy Color version. So we have an understanding on how the GBA can switch to Game Boy Color mode. But now let's turn our attention 
to enhanced Game Boy Color games. There are a very small number of Game Boy Color games that when inserted into a GBA will enable additional features in the game. One such example is The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. It will update its color palette and also add an additional store in the game. Another example is Shantae for the Game Boy Color. If we run this game on real Game Boy Color hardware, it works as expected. But when the same game is placed into a GBA, the color palette is altered and the spinning message GBA Enhanced is shown on the screen. The game also features a new Tinkerbat exclusive transformation specifically made for the GBA version. But what's interesting about all this is how does the Game Boy Advance know that there are enhanced features on this cartridge and how does it actually unlock them? After all, this cartridge is fixed. In other words, if we dump the ROM 10 times, we are going to get the same ROM dump every single time. So how does the GBA know that it needs to look for these enhanced features that are not available on the Game Boy Color version? If we dump the contents of this game and try running it under emulation, you'll note that it runs the standard version. To open up the GBA enhanced version requires the ROM to be patched with a few bytes. But this is a physical cartridge and there is no concept of self-modifying code here. The same code will run on the Game Boy Color and on the Game Boy Advance. So how does Shantae know that it needs to add the enhancements to the game when it's running under the GBA? To answer this, we need to understand a little about assembly language programming, but this isn't overly complicated, so stay with me. The Sharp processor found on the Game Boy Color is based on the Zilog Z80, but it's not exactly a Z80 processor but it does have the same registers. Think of a register as a storage area for data that the processor wants to perform work on. The CPU will load values into registers that it's accessed from memory, work on the data in the registers, and then it might store them back into RAM once it's finished with the data. On the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, each register is eight bits in size, but these registers can also be combined to become 16 bits wide. When the Game Boy is powered on, these registers are set to a particular set of default values. But the one that we want to focus on is register B. B can also be combined with C to form a 16-bit register as well. When we turn on a Game Boy, B is set to zero. And this is the register that determines if the game is running in Game Boy or in GBA Enhanced mode. But how can we test this? Well, we can use an emulator such as BGB. If we load Shantae right at the beginning and start stepping through the code, you'll notice two things. First, that register B is set to zero as we said, and the first time the code references B, it's performing this particular function. SLA is an instruction that shifts all the bits left for the given register that it's trying to access. In this case, register B. But because B is zero, when we shift left the value of zero, we get the result of zero, so nothing actually happens. But if I reset the debugger and set the value of B to equal one, then we get a different result. And you can see the game loads in GBA enhanced mode. This is because the SLA function is shifting the bit one to the left. Therefore, the result of one being shifted left is one zero in binary or two in hexadecimal. So we can conclude that register B initially is the flag to determine if the game is running in GBA enhanced or in regular Game Boy mode. Now, of course, this is emulation and we don't have this luxury on a physical cartridge where code cannot be modified in this fashion. Well, quite simply, the programmers took advantage of registers being set to different values when a Game Boy Advanced is powered on and put into Game Boy Color mode. During boot up of a Game Boy Advance, when it shifts into Game Boy Color mode, register B is initialized with the value of one. This is different than the value of zero that was on the Game Boy Color. This means when the code reaches the SLAB function call, it will set the value of B to equal two, which means it puts the game into GBA Enhance mode. And if we take a look at the code for a popular Game Boy Advance emulator, MGBA, you can clearly see that it's initializing the value of B to equal one 
if it's running Game Boy Color games on the GBA. By taking advantage of different initialized registers when the Game Boy Color is powered on in GBA mode means that it's possible to check and apply enhancements to the game for the Game Boy Advance only. Finally, it's worth mentioning that these GBA enhancements can just as easily run on stock Game Boy Color hardware. So with the Game Boy Color, you can run the GBA enhanced version of Shantae on a physical cartridge should you choose to do so. This unique feature ultimately meant that developers could take advantage of games running on GBA hardware without requiring the creation of a unique GBA enhanced cartridge or some other trick to patch bytes. This was simple, yet very clever. The enhancements themselves, generally speaking, weren't too complicated. Usually a color palette change, or perhaps new graphics could have been added, but all this data is ultimately stored on the cartridge. All the GBA enhancements for Shantae live in the Shantae data, and they are loaded in if register B on initialize is set to one. So there you have it. That's how the Game Boy Advance handles Game Boy Color games. That simple switch in the Game Boy Advance really begins everything. Without that switch, there's no way that the GBA knows that it needs to run in Game Boy Color mode. And I think this was a pretty simple method by Nintendo. And you gotta feel like earlier on, maybe they were trying to find a better way to do this without a switch in place where you could just detect if it was a Game Boy Color cartridge without any circuitry involved. But I think ultimately this was the smartest solution for them and the most foolproof. But that will do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.